Hi, welcome to Recap Nation. Today I will be recapping a 2022 movie called Turning Red. So, sit back and enjoy. The film begins with Meili, a 13-year-old Canadian girl whose mother is of Chinese origin and has tight control over her family. Meili has always been an obedient child, but as she reaches puberty, she struggles to reconcile her developing sense of self with her familial tradition. Miriam, Priya, and Abby were Meili's best friends. They all thought that her dream lover was Davin, but the girl was more interested in the boys of four towns in an all-male pop band. Meili and her mother share the care of the family's largest Chinese temple in Toronto. After cleaning the temple, they get ready to receive guests, and Meili will always wear a red panda costume, while her mother shares the story of how the animal has brought her family good fortune and prosperity. Following that, they go back home and watch TV while Jin Meili's father prepares dinner for the family. The girl is so excited when she hears that her favorite pop band will be having a tour in North America after the commercial break, but Ming quickly fires Meili due to her judgment of music. After dinner, the girl began to draw a man in her notebook. Suddenly, she realized that her sketch resembled Devin, so she quickly hid under the bed to continue her drawings. Her mother entered the room a few minutes later, and the girl quickly jumped up onto the bed. She quickly noticed a book on the floor. Her mother took the book to see what the girl was doing and discovered sketches of Devin. The mom quickly realized that it was the young man from the convenience store that Meili was sketching. Meili was afraid and tried everything she could to stop her mother, but she was unable to do so. Her mother decided to go to the convenience store, warn the young man, and show him her daughter's drawings. The boy was terrified as to why she was warning him to keep away from Meili. When they returned home, the girl was shocked at how embarrassed her mother had made her feel. Meili experienced various nightmares that rainy night. When she woke up the next morning, she walked to the bathroom and looked in the mirror, seeing something strange. She cried, knowing she had transformed into a big red panda. Her mother rushed to the toilet, knocked, and started asking, what happened? But the girl refused to say anything, so her mother concluded that her daughter had matured into a woman and rushed off to get some necessities. Meili tried to escape through the window, but she was too big. When her mother walked into the bathroom, she hid behind the curtains. Then, all of a sudden, her mother came back with cramp medication, a hot water bottle, and pants. The girl tried to bring her mother out of the bathroom but failed. As her mother was about to lift the curtains, the fire alarm went off, and the food she had left in the oven was burning. The young lady seized the opportunity and ran to her room. She thought she simply needed to go to sleep again, and it would all be gone. When she woke up, the girl gradually dropped, and her entire body returned to normal, except her hair had turned red. As her mother prepared to drive her to school, Meili tried to cover her new look with a cap. That day, she was determined to stay calm at school so that the monster would not reappear. However, her plan went wrong when she discovered Taylor, her classmate, had fastened hundreds of posters with her artwork to the wall as a prank. Meili got angry and tried to attack Taylor, but changed her mind when her hand morphed into a ball of fur and her tail appeared. She rushed to her class and tried to relax. When Miriam entered, she asked Meili what was going on, but Meili insisted she was just looking forward to mud class. During class, Miriam informed the girl that her mother was outside the school. One of the guards attempted to stop her and capture her, but Ming Li leapt to the window and yelled for her daughter because she wanted to deliver the tampons that the girl had overlooked. Then, suddenly, there was an explosion. Mei Li couldn't suppress her emotions and completely turned into a red panda. The kids got distracted by the explosion, so she went unnoticed, but her mother, Ming Li, watched all that had happened and followed her daughter. She escaped into the restroom to hide. When Mei Li escaped through the window, her mother got into the car. The big panda destroyed everything in its path, causing great confusion and disaster. Mei Li finally arrived home via narrow alley. As her mother entered the house, she discovered that everything was broken and her daughter was weeping in the room. Jin then entered and asked if the transformation had happened. Mei Li was surprised to hear this because she realized her parents knew something she didn't. Ming then took the three of them to the temple, where she explained that hundreds of years ago, her ancestor had begged the gods to turn her into a red panda. The gods granted her request and gave her the power to control her emotions one night during the red moon, in order to transform herself into a powerful panda. In this way, the woman was able to repel the enemy, saving her village and family from calamity. Sun Yi handed this gift onto her daughter a few years later. It was handed down to their daughters, and so forth. On hearing this story, Mei Li was filled with wrath and wanted to damage the image of her ancestor, but her parents were able to calm her down and tell her that there was a solution. Her mother had also gone through it and said that only a ceremony could break the curse. During the Red Moon, Ming's panda's soul was caught and sealed in her necklace, and she planned to do the same for Mei Li to cure her permanently. 
The girl would have to keep her emotions under control as much as possible until the next full moon. Her parents then placed the girl's bedding in an empty room, so as to prevent any more accidents. The girl tried everything to remove the monster inside her, but nothing worked. Her friends soon approached her bedroom window to inform her that the band Four Round would be performing in Toronto. She opened the window and pulled her friends inside the room. To her amazement, Priya and Abby were pleased with her new appearance and believed she was lovely. Miriam, however, was curious about what had happened to the girl. Millie tried to explain that she would be normal one day, but she couldn't stop crying. Abby told her that the performance would take place on the 18th of the next month, and the Red Moon ceremony would only take place on the 25th. Consequently, Maylee would be able to attend the concert. Miriam began singing one of the girl's favorite songs as she saw her friend crying, and the other girls joined in with the rhythm. Quickly, the panda's mood improved, and she began to cheer up her friends, who hugged her, and Maylee returned to her natural shape. As Ming approached the room, Maylee asked her three friends to leave. She then informed her parents that she had learned to control the panda and asked them to test her. They showed her various photographs that triggered powerful emotions in her, but she was able to contain them. Jin, in his last attempt, presented Meili with a box full of adorable kittens, and this time, she was overjoyed. However, she remembered her best friends and managed to regain control. Her parents were astonished at how she had managed to control the beast so quickly. Meili then used this as an opportunity to ask her mother's permission to attend the concert, but her mother refused, claiming that Meili would be unable to control herself during a concert. Jin tried to persuade Ming to trust her daughter, the mother responded that she trusted Meili but not the gang members who would be attending. Despite her dissatisfaction, the girl thanked her parents for listening to her, packed her stuff, and left. A few minutes later, the phone rang, and Jin informed Ming that her mother needed to speak with her. The woman informed Ming that she had learned about Meili's plan from the news, so she would be on her way to Toronto, and she hung up the phone unexpectedly the next day as her friends accompanied her to the train station to calm her down after a fight on the field with Tyler. They agreed to pretend to be having a sleepover at home in order to sneak into the show, but they needed to figure out how to pay for the $200 tickets. Just as Meili was about to change, several of her classmates entered the restroom. She tried to hide, but it was too late. Her cover had been blown. Much to their surprise, the young ladies admired the red panda. They were even willing to pay to see him. That was how the idea of getting the ticket money came to be. They started charging kids to take photos with the panda. They immediately started selling personalized t-shirts and accessories. The money for the four tickets was gradually acquired by the friends. However, there was still $100 to go before Saturday. Just then, Tyler appeared and asked Meili to go to his birthday as a panda. She declined immediately, but he added that he was willing to pay for her presence. Meili charged $200 for the job, which he accepted. When she was ready to leave the house under the guise of going to a study group, her mother offered to accompany her. Meili tried to change her mind, but Ming wouldn't pass up the opportunity to keep an eye on her daughter. As they were about to open the gate, they saw the seniors club. Meili's grandmother, accompanied by her sisters, had arrived in Toronto to perform the panda sealing ritual. Meanwhile, everyone at Tyler's party was waiting for the panda to arrive. Meili stayed for a few minutes, but her great aunts wouldn't let her go anywhere without being noticed. The girl claimed that she was going to sleep putting some toy animals under the blanket and preparing to go through the window, but when her grandmother entered the room, she warned her not to let the beast out again. Every time this happened, the panda grew stronger, making it more difficult to get rid of during the ritual. A few minutes later, Meili arrived at the birthday party wearing a panda costume from her family's temple. Everyone was disappointed since they had expected to see the real panda. Tyler said he would not pay the $200 if the panda did not appear. After seeing her friend's sadness and being unable to enjoy the occasion, Meili chose to ignore her grandmother's advice and transformed into a red panda. After spending time with the guests, the four friends gathered on the roof of the house to eat cake and celebrate their ability to attend the event. However, the big dream came to an end. When the radio guy informed Meili that four towns would be in Toronto on the 25th, rather than the 18th as Abby had said, she would be unable to attend the event since it would clash with her ritual. Back at home, Ming's mother and aunt decide to leave for their hotel. The woman went to see her daughter and notices that the window is open and attempts to close it, but steps on a fragment of glass on the bed's edge. As she reaches down to pick it up, she discovers other red panda-related images and things. She tries to rouse Meili so she can explain what those items are, but notices that the girl isn't in bed. Back at the party, the girl was distraught since she wouldn't be able to attend the concert with her friends. Tyler tells the panda to play with the guests again, which upsets Meili even more. He said that the contract had ended and that he would not pay the required money. He added that Meili was as crazy as her mother. Meili got angry and then attacked Tyler. Ming's mother arrives just in time. 
Tyler starts crying as he begs for his life and for them to get over him. After what has happened, the woman believes that they are the wrong companions for Maylee, and that the girl lacks the courage to confront her mother in order to defend her friends. The big day arrived, and Miriam, Abby, and Priya purchased tickets to the concert as Maylee prepared for her ritual. At her mother's request, she went to change. Her father then went into her room to encourage her. Maylee stated that she wished to keep the panda, but didn't want to be connected with a monster. Her father then advised her not to try to avoid uncomfortable situations, but to accept them and learn to live with them. Ming then walked in and summoned them to begin the ritual. The Sherman then formed a circle on the floor and instructed Maylee to stay inside. As the ladies sang, the circle began to light up, and Maylee was brought to the astral realm, where she met her ancestor, Sun Yi. When the girl tried to cross it, the woman's spirit transformed a red sash into a mirror. Maylee realized the panda spirit was being removed from her as she tried to cross to the other side of the mirror. She was having trouble getting to the other side, but just as she was about to get rid of the beast, she remembered how much fun she had as a panda and changed her mind to return to him. Her mother approaches and tries to comfort her. She asks the Sherman to continue the ritual, but Maylee insists on keeping the red panda. She tries to leave the temple, but her dad, grandmother, and aunt stop her. In response, she throws them away and says she is going to the concert, which makes Ming go so angry that his amulet, which had trapped her panda, breaks and releases her sleeping beast, which turns into a black beast. Meili uses her transformation skills to get to the concert faster, and as she gets closer, she meets her friends. She apologizes for not being there for them, and explains that she couldn't get rid of the panda as it is a part of her. Everything is okay until Meili's mother approaches the concert. As soon as the band began performing, the big monster entered and ruined the area in search of Meili. The elders club arrived and tried to calm the monster. However, the monster took the girl, and the guy formed a circle around her. Ming destroyed the four town sign, and Meili became upset. She transformed into a panda and bit the beast's finger. The rest of the ritual began after the girl attracted her mother's attention. While the ladies gathered around the circle to sing the song, the old shaman climbed into the stands. Despite being infinitely smaller, Meili managed to hit the monster's head, knocking the beast down and rendering it unconscious, but half of her body was outside the circle. Meili rushed to draw her inside, and her aunts joined her. The ladies destroyed their amulets, released their monsters, and joined in two. As they sang, they gained enough power to drag Ming into the circle. The four town boys and Meili's friends gave a helping hand with the music, and the ritual began. They were all sent to the astral realm, where Meili encountered a younger version of her mother, who was sobbing with guilt for hurting Meili's grandmother and causing the scar on Meili's forehead. The lady claimed she would never be good enough for her mother or anybody else, to which Meili replied that she felt the same way. She took the lady's hand and walked through the portal, where they were greeted by Meili's grandmother and aunts. Ming took advantage of the opportunity to ask for forgiveness from her mother, and they all passed through the portal together, except Meili, who was now more determined than ever to keep her panda. At the end, the sunny spirit picked up the girl and led her beneath the moonlight, where they said their goodbyes. The story of the panda had been the topic of conversation all over the world, but Meili continued to help her mother at the temple, attracting even more visitors with her panda transformation skills. Everything appeared to be going smoothly, and if things kept going as they were, they'd soon have enough money to rebuild the temple. Her mother didn't stop her from going to karaoke with her friends and even invited them for dinner. What do you think of this movie? Comment below.